meals from the nursing home to the jail. And the sheriff um, agreed that that would be the case. Um, he now wants an agreement between the commissioners and the sheriff office regarding the red truck maintenance. Um, since he, I guess, is ultimately responsible for it, we're going to guarantee that the oil changes be done on time, tire maintenance, registration and inspections and licensing and so forth. Um, we will take care of um, with the jail budget. So it's just a, a small item that we'll take care of. So, excuse me, the, the, the title when it was transferred from the state was transferred to the sheriff's department about the county. That's right. That's the issue that uh, that I've been fighting for almost two well, years. That's what they did. That's what they did. Yeah. But the state law or the RSA say that all equipment, all buildings are responsibility of the Board of Commissioners. Um, and we did get a, a, um, a finding from person in the Attorney General's office that it could be used at the jail for any type of law enforcement uh, activities. So it, they did get it released to, so we could use it. It's just a shame to see that practically a brand new vehicle sitting out there and nobody's using it. We, we had a, a need for it. In fact, it was in a budget to, to get a vehicle to do exactly what yeah. is going to be done with it. So the only thing we needed to do was to buy a cap, put the cap on the back. So. Are you going to put on the website whether you're having a meeting on May 11th if you go to conferences? Yes, it'll make that. Sure. Absolutely clear. Whether you go to the dog show or you go to I can have Stanley do the dog show. Okay, there is a meeting this afternoon at three thirty for the farm day, which you're gonna yeah, you. attend. Okay. I think we'll have a unless somebody anybody in the public got any questions or comments, we'll have a recess here for maybe 25 minutes until uh, until Jason Johnson gets here with this Primex presentation, uh, Prime Care presentation. What's that? Prime Care? Yeah. Are you going on strike? Me? Is it the nurses uh, over in the main medical? What's that? No. Who is it that's on strike? You know what it was? meeting again after a short recess. We had some people that didn't show up like they didn't show up last week. That was my fault. That's, that's all right. Um, we'll start off with a, with a, a short report from the superintendent. morning we have uh, 46 in-house, zero weekenders, five transfers, 
15 hour on pretrial release for the total population of 69. Took in 12 inmates last week, six were repeaters and 17 were released. Repeater charges, one came in for arrest warrants, booked five times in 12 years, <coughs> one for protective custody in open container, booked six times in 15 years, one for DWI, open container in protective custody, booked two times in two years, one for a KPS, which is an arrest warrant out of Superior Court, uh, booked five, four times in four years, one for unlawful possession of alcohol, protective custody, booked two times in two years, and one for three KPSs, booked three times in three years. Uh, question, from, question on those, um, you know what area of the county they come from? Most of them from uh, I can track that. I, I don't put that in this report, but I can certainly look at it. Uh, Province has been taking out um, four inmates per day. They have seven available. Uh, we had we conducted that work detail in Tuckerboro yesterday. Uh, please share some pictures with you. Um, this is what the, the transfer station looked like when before we started, um, and this is what it looked like after we oh, were done. Nice. Uh, we had uh, Sergeant Phillips brought out three inmates. We were there for a total of about three hours. Uh, and the, the attendant said that he would have hired uh, a few people and paid them 13 bucks an hour and estimated it would probably take about a day. Uh, and we were able to accomplish the task in, in three hours. Um, and they were very pleased with our performance over there. So that was good. Um, that concludes the normal report. When are you scheduled to do recipes? Uh, this week. We're starting uh, Thursday or Friday this week, and then uh, for the first three or four days next week. What's the reason that uh, there were no prisoners available for the like, farm? Because they, those who were willing to be able went for out to this job? Farm the farm was there, no one makes available for the farm. Uh, um, yeah, the farm manager's supervisor said he could use more people now for general cleanup. Okay. Let's check it out. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. there may have been, would you say, seven were available and you took out four. Mm -hmm. Those three may have been in there and they couldn't lift anything or couldn't rake or whatever. Okay. But yeah. Just um, check it out. Yeah, because he, he's a good he help. That's the yeah, He told me that. Okay. Um, at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Frank Kamikowski from Frank here. Uh, him and his associates, uh, as you know, we're looking to um, possibly bring them in for providing health care services to the inmates mm -hmm. at the facility. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Commissioner Solomon. I'm Commissioner Sorensen. Commissioner Kenny. Make up the board of directors for uh, Carroll County. Very nice to meet you, uh, sir and ma'am. What I'd like to do is just introduce the staff that I brought mm -hmm. and the superintendent and I had talked about who we felt was appropriate to come up to have this discussion with you. Uh, first and foremost, my name is Frank Kamikowski, as the superintendent said. I'm one of the vice presidents for uh, Time Care Medical. Uh, I run the business side. I'm the organizational person for the uh, organization. I've been with Prime Care. Uh, it's going to be nine years this uh, coming August. Retired naval officer, a career naval officer. Started with Prime Care, as I said, nine years ago and was able to work my way up uh, in the organization. To my far right is uh, Denise Jamola. She's a registered nurse. Uh, she is, uh, manages a number of Pennsylvania contracts. The reason I had asked Denise to attend uh, today's meeting in case there were some questions. She also has oversight, corporate oversight management for the facility at Rockingham County. Uh, we are currently the medical vendor there. We've been there. Uh, we just signed our third contract. So we're starting on actually our 11th year there. We had two previous five-year contracts. So it's a five-year contract that you know we uh, typically, it's whatever the county has uh, desires. We've been in some contracts, sir, where it's been a one-year or two-year contract with a number of renewals, a straight five. It all depends upon the county charter on for uh, uh, professional services, what the county is available to do. Uh, directly to Denise's left is Amy Gordon. She is actually our health services administrator at the Rockingham uh, County uh, Correctional Facility there. We asked the two ladies to come in case there were specific questions about the operations. I'm not a registered nurse. I'm not a health care clinician. The superintendent and I talked at our initial meeting. We felt the board may have questions specifically that I may not be able to answer adequately. So mm -hmm. uh, we asked them to come up 
to address any specific questions. Directly to my left uh, is Derek Hughes. He's a junior vice president of operations. He and Denise both have kind of the corporate oversight of the Rockingham County facility. Once again, I brought Derek. He has said Derek and I work very closely together on all the contracts uh, and all the, the business associations. Uh, what I'd like to do, sir, and I know we're limited on time, and I'll try not to take too much of your time. We brought some additional company backgrounds that we have presented to the superintendent at our initial meeting. We also have copies of the, the, the letter that we had submitted based upon the health services that we had discussed. But I just wanted to spend a few minutes and tell you a little bit about Prime Care and who yep. we are. Yep. We are owned by a, uh, and still owned by a single osteopathic physician, Dr. Carl Hoffman, uh, Jr. Uh, we are celebrating our 25th year uh, as a corporation on September 18th of this year. Uh, some of the scheduling difficulties we had, Dr. Hoffman unfortunately had some health problems. He typically would attend these uh, briefings, these discussions with the county commissioners. We were trying to get his schedule freed up so he could, and unfortunately his hospitalization prevented. So I apologize for him, he absolutely likes to come to these things. Dr. Hoffman, as I said, he's our owner, he's our corporate medical director, and uh, it's a family-run business, as I told the superintendent. Uh, a number of his uh, children and wife work for the corporation in various capacities. Uh, his son is the marketing director, his other daughter is the HR director. We are all also close personal friends. That's kind of one of the business models that Dr. Hoffman had. Like my son played hockey for Dr. Hoffman when he coached. And when I was getting ready to retire, I was sitting in the stands, and I didn't know Dr. Hoffman had a business. He said, Frank, what are you going to be doing after you retire? I go, well, I don't know. I'm just going to get a job. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I, there's not too many big oceans in the middle of in Pennsylvania and Harrisburg. He said, well, I have a business. And I go, what's your business? He goes, I work in correctional health care. And I've been in the business at that time, you know, 14, uh, 15 and a half, 16 years. And he said, would you like to come in for an interview? And I said, sure, I'd love to. So we sat down and talked, uh, the organization uh, needed a little bit of organization, the actual organization, and I was able to find a place uh, that fit. And I told Dr. Hoffman, as I told the superintendent, our business model is to manage the health care for any county. We'll be very honest, we'll be upfront, uh, we'll look at your operation, and we'll honestly tell you, hey, we believe we could help you, or we think your operation is good, uh, keep doing it, keep doing uh, the great things that your staff is currently doing. And speaking with the superintendent, we, we got some rough numbers and did some analysis. We made a recommendation for some changes in some of the health care uh, because we are a management company, and I'm not saying the current operation that you have is not very efficient and working very good, but as I said, we're in, we've been in business for 25 years. Uh, we know what is required for correctional health care. Uh, we don't provide the Cadillac of care, some of the county commissioners, of course, being the fiscal manager, saying, well, how much does this cost? How sure. much does this cost? Yeah, well, always have to ask that, that, that question. That's the bottom line. We, we base all our health care on national standards, and the national standards we base them on are the, the National Commission on Correctional Health Care. And that was a group formed in the mid-'80s, late-'70s, by uh, physicians to determine what was the standard of care for health care. There really wasn't a standard. You would have a county jail where there would be a doctor there for two hours. There would be a county jail with a doctor there for four hours. How much nursing service was required. What the National Commission did was standardize the health care, the minimum acceptable community standards of care for health care for corrections, specifically for jails. Now, as we all know, we have jails and we have prisons. Prime care business is specifically geared to the jail community. We have done some prison work, but really our niche market, if you would, is the jails. Uh, we currently have 58 facilities in northeastern United States, only the one in New Hampshire, which I mentioned. Predominantly, our home base is in Pennsylvania. We have the entire state of West Virginia, both the adult facilities, which are regionalized, and the juvenile facilities, which are also regionalized. Uh, so we're big enough that we have buying power with pharmacies, with laboratories, with x-ray companies uh, to be able to find staff. But we're small enough, in my opinion, to still be able to provide that hands-on, you know, direct uh, contact. 
and I told the superintendent, 